go. Nice. I'd like to start by thanking all of you for coming to help celebrate 2019's Rare Disease Day with us. I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about a young girl named Mila. Mila was a typically developing child, precocious by many accounts, until around age four, when she began suffering a mysterious decline. She could have really been anyone's child. I think it's one of the reasons why Mila's story has gotten quite a lot of attention around the world. She went on hikes for two, three hours at a time. A group of people came up to her and they said, hey, little guy, aren't you cute? And she said, I'm not a guy and I'm not cute. I'm dangerous. You know, and she was. <laughs> at that time, she was beginning to show some unusual symptoms, including pulling books up close to her face, having trouble discerning the letters in low light. At age five, she began stumbling in unusual motor movements of her feet. Things became much more serious in a very short period of time. The ophthalmologist, his advice to me was to chill out and just relax. That was six months before she lost her vision completely. And they did an incredible amount of tests that ended up in a diagnosis of Batten disease. No cure, no treatment, and it was 100% fatal. We said, this is a family that's in need. We called up the family, and I introduced myself, and I said, we'd like to help. We had been thinking about how to roll out whole genome sequencing for patients for quite some time. I will never forget the phone call I got. Our geneticist said, Tim has something he wants to tell you. He actually thought outside the box. The day that she received her first dose, I walked through the hallways of Boston Children's Hospital for a few hours. And I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, Mila. Am I the big leader? People told me that it was impossible. They told me that it would take 10 years and that it would never be in time for Mila. This is sort of the best confluence of interests where you know a family's desire to help their child also helps many other people in this very small rare disease community. This was an entirely new drug targeted to one child. Mila's drug was called Milicin. It's named after her. This was an opportunity for me to tell Mila's story, to show the world that together we can race to create a new treatment path that could save the lives of children across hundreds or thousands of diseases. My mission together with Dr. Yu was to apply what we did for Mila to many other children. We've seen a revolution in the way that we can make diagnoses. We can sequence genomes almost at the drop of a hat now, but to actually develop a therapy in this short period of time, that's a first. The question is, how do we scale this out to as many patients as possible in as safe as way as possible? Why can't we have a thousand drugs for a thousand different kids? <laughs> Mila is the first. She had to break that ice to say, this is possible. Now we are entering another unknown territory, which is how do we rehabilitate a child like Mila that's lost so much. It doesn't mean that everything is magically solved. It doesn't mean that every patient like Mila will have a customized drug for her tomorrow or the next day or next year. But it shows that when we put everyone together, it's possible. I don't know if it's in time for Mila. It is too early to know that, but I'm really excited that we're in a day where it looks like there's hope.